But you guys, it's Karen and I'm here to do another haul. The other haul feels like it was only a couple of weeks ago and there was a lot of makeup in it. This has also got a lot of makeup in it, um, but there's also some hair colours and some self-tan items. I'll talk about the hair and self-tan at the end because I imagine most people will be interested in the, the makeup. Um, sh the last one I did was kind of an accumulation of a couple of months, but I think what what's really been not a comfort, but has been a distraction, a great distraction from me is shopping online you know just sort of browsing through the through, through the different sites and finding things or having a look around the shops now that they are open again here in in scotland and buying a couple of things i have found that quite a nice distraction um and i'm, I'm lucky that i'm able to do that because i do th feel like i've spent a lot of money on makeup lately before and lockdown before my dad died etc it was i was definitely being better and there wasn't as many hauls and i wasn't buying as much and i was you know coming down on everything and that's definitely my goal to get back to but at the moment I am allowing myself to you know buy frivolous things if you like um, especially as although our shops are open we're still just coming out of lockdown in Scotland. Let's start with face and these first two items I haven't actually used because I completely forgot about them to be honest these will be something that will probably sit there until the point that I'm you thinking oh, I'd really like to use that foundation but it's too dark or it's too light or something like that so they are the NYX foundation pro foundation mixer so I got one in the light color and one in the deep is this one called light white one in white and one in deep so that I can perhaps play around with some foundations they had really good reviews um, I ordered them from boots online I think um, and they're definitely I'm trying to figure out my foundations in fact where you see the sewing machine is not behind me normally behind that is my foundations in that white sort of display thing um and i was trying to i'm trying to figure out exactly what the colors are and which ones are which foundations i have are the lightest and try to use some of the ones that are just sitting there because there's often ones i'm like oh i don't know if that's too light for me when i've got a self tan on or is that too dark for me when i haven't and so i need to figure that out and hopefully these will help me use some of the ones that might not be the right color the other NYX item I bought was this Born to Glow Radiant Concealer and I love this. This is what I've got under my eyes today and this is in colour Vanilla. Um, this reminds me of the one I liked from Maybelline. I think they probably still do it but I don't buy Maybelline because they're not um, cruelty free and NYX are. You can see it's got that lovely little sponge tip and you just squeeze it and get some out and I love everything about this. I love the applicator. You can see that you could almost apply it with that little sponge tip. But I tend to just use my little finger and blend it in or I'll use the little mini Real Techniques sponge. Um, but this colour, I think, I think it's about three or four down on the, you know, from the lightest. That's what I've got under my eyes just now. Some of you, I said in my last video, some of you may think this is too bright, but I really like this. Um, I think it brightens up my under eye just enough and it doesn't draw attention to lines. It doesn't change throughout the day you know like i can look at my under eyes at the end of the day and they still look exactly the same really really like that so that's the born to glow concealer i bought a bronze stick by milk makeup i had wanted to do a milk makeup haul but um a couple of the things that i wanted to try weren't in stock and i ended up just getting that little um blush do you remember the little cream blush i didn't like the cream blush um i found that it just was quite patchy and it was hard to put on my face it wasn't nice but this i really like and i have never really been into cream bronzers i had the chanel tan de chanel or something like that bronze de chanel <laughs> it wasn't called that what was it called tan de soleil I'm sure you guys know the one I mean. There was this one by Chanel that everybody was using and it was a sort of solid tan and I didn't love that one. Um, this I really, really liked. So I've got it on today. So I just put a sort of stripe along there, stripe along there before I've put my powder in, use my brush to blend it in and I think it looks really nice. I was scared it was going to be too dark for me because that looks like quite a dark colour, doesn't it? But I think it actually seems to be fine. I don't know whether I am when I'm at my lightest, you know, I have got self tan on just now, whether it would be too dark, but this is the lightest color they do. That was the one that was out of stock when I tried to order it. So yeah, so far I like that and it actually lasts. I was thinking with it being a cream that it might sort of break up, you know, the way that my Too Faced Milk Chocolate does, it sort of goes a bit patchy, but this one doesn't seem to, so really like that. I bought two blushes. I can't remember if I showed you this one already. This is the brand called B by Superdrug and this one is in Plum. I already had the one in Apricot, um, and I bought this one. I think, I don't think I have showed it to you, but I think I've told you I was wearing it. So it's a sort of liquid blush, or again, not sort of, it is a liquid blush. And that's what it looks like. It's, I love this color. I love plummy type blushes because I think they just go with everything, don't they? You don't have to 
worry, you know, if you're wearing a green eyeshadow, green eyeshadow or a blue eyeshadow, I always think a plum kind of um, blush will go well with it. And this is just so lovely. You can see when it blends out, it just gives a nice flush. I always think these cream ones look really natural. And these are the type of things I will use if I'm not wearing, you know, barely any makeup for me would be doing my eyebrows and putting on a bit of liquid blush and maybe a bit of lip balm. And these are great for that, but they're also great, you know, on top of foundation, they don't move your foundation around. They stay, really love those. And like I said, you've seen me wearing the apricot one a lot. And then the other one I bought, because I've been loving them, is this little mini hourglass ambient lighting blush. So I showed you that I had bought the Radiant Magenta one because I have dim infusion in a full size and I got the Radiant Magenta in a little mini size like this. And so I thought I would get the diffused heat, which I've never tried. Um, I meant to use this today. It's just stunning, absolutely stunning. It's quite a light color, that one, isn't it? I expected it to be a bit darker than that, but it looks really, really pretty on. She looks quite pinky there. Um, but I, I picked up what I thought was the diffused heat, but actually I was using the Radiant Magenta, so that's the one I've got on today. But I have used this a couple of times and I love it. I've got, you know, plenty of colour in there because you never really know what you're going to get in terms of how much is going to be the highlighter and how much is the blush. £24 for this, which I think is really good. I think it's good that they have the option of getting this little travel size because firstly it'd be great for travel because it's a tiny little blush but it's not one that's too small for your brush to get in if you see what I mean um and also these are really nice and not everybody can afford the full size and if you want to buy a variety of blushes you know you, it takes a long time to hit pan on a blush I don't do that anymore um it's funny my neighbor asked me for a rec recommendation for blush the other day and she she was saying she'd be using the same she'd been using the same Bare Minerals blush for like the last year and a half. And that used to be me. I had one that I used and it was from Superdrug. I can't remember the range, but it was a pink one. And that's all I used. And I, I used it until there was literally none left. I don't think I'll hit pan on any of my blushes anytime soon, you know, if ever, because I've got so many. These are just a little bit different, I feel like, because they've got that little bit of highlighter in them and I don't really use highlighter. So love that. Um, I bought some lashes. These are just a repurchase of my usual. They're the Eyelure um number 003 three quarter length um three quarter length the perfect ones for me that's what i've got on my eyes today so love those okay on to eyes and i bought three mascaras i didn't realize i had bought three i forgot about that one there um the first one i posted on instagram and facebook is this one it's the number not number seven w7 lash tastic recommended by one of you thank you very much it's got a massive fat brush so when i saw it i was like Oh, I don't think I'm going to like that. It's got a big fat brush and it's a plastic brush, but I'll try it anyway because I, you know, I love it when you guys take a minute to, to write a, a recommendation. And if it's something that, you know, is in my budget, is cruelty free, doesn't have loads of fragrance and alcohol, if it's skincare, etc., I will try and buy it. Um, this was like £2.95, I think, Prime, Amazon Prime. Um, I really like this. I've only used it two or three times, two times, I think, and I really, really enjoyed it. It didn't... Um, crumble it didn't come off it wasn't difficult to get off which you guys know is a, is a, hate, a pet hate of mine the brush was easier to use than I thought I don't know how long it will take before it dries out you know with being that that small amount of money but and I can see even taking it out there there's a little bit dry like on the base of it so I don't know if it will dry out quickly but for that price I don't mind it didn't irritate my eyes either which is another kind of concern when you're using a cheap mascara but really really good and cruelty free so i think this is the one i'm going to test out next um, then i bought this one from soap and glory called thick and fast um this one i have used a couple of times and i do like i think this one will be a really good one this is a natural bristle brush it is not super thin but neither is it thick so you know it's pretty good for me but i think this is a fairly standard mascara in that it doesn't do anything wow you know i need to go over it quite a bit and work at it quite a bit to get my eyelashes to stand out and i think that there are probably others that I'll enjoy more than this one. I've just got a feeling from using it that few times. It's like, yeah, it's okay. It's quite nice, but I don't think this is going to be a holy grail. And then the third and final mascara I got was the Barry M with Anna Lingus Curling and Lengthening Mascara. I've never um, had any good results with Barry M mascara, but I really like this brush. Although it's plastic, it's very, very thin. As you can see, I really like that. Um, I used this and... I've only used this once, I think. I need to use this a bit more to make a final opinion, but I think that the reason I only used it once was it was quite clumpy. You know, it's one of those that you put it on and it's like, oh God, now I need, I need a tissue and I need to do this with my eyelashes, wipe it on the tissue and then I go over them again. And then I think when I was using this, 
I grabbed my pixie mascara and was kind of, you know, using that to separate them a bit and take off the this mascara. So I've got a feeling this will be a fail, but I, I want to give it a proper run for its money, if you like, and try it again. Um, so you will see this probably in empties and fails, I would say. But if not, and I love it, then I'll come back and tell you and show it in a favourite. Okay, so that's everything for mascaras. I bought one eyeshadow palette. This is my first Huda Beauty fail. Um, this is the Huda Beauty Neon Palette. I have got five, I think, of these small palettes. So I've got three that are the nude obsessions in this kind of hard packaging, and then I've got two in the sort of cardboard packaging, and I love them all. I I love the, the way that the colours are very unique. The colours when I use them from my Huda Beauty palettes are different in all of them. They're all different to anything else I've had. And so I love that because it's not very often with having so much shadows, you find something unique. And that to me is very unique. They are very unique. I've never tried any of her big palettes. Um, her big palettes, I was put off in the beginning because a lot of people were people saying they were very crumbly and they were very hard to get a good pigment from, you know. Um, but these smaller palettes, I've had nothing but good luck with. It's not really luck, is it? But good experiences with. This one, I was very excited because although it's, I think it's supposed to be a yellow palette, neon, because there's a couple of neons. I think this is supposed to be yellow because it's definitely not the green one. I think there is a green one. Or maybe it is. Anyway, this is what it looks like. I was looking at it thinking... There's a couple of colours there that look really peachy to me. So this one looks a bit peachy. Then this one over here. No, this one over here. It just was a few that I was like, they look kind of peachy to me. This one looks very interesting. It's like a sort of blue. You can probably see what my complaint is from me doing the swatches. There's no pigment in them at all. They're just really, really clum uh, crumbly. I was going to say clumsy. It's me that's clumsy. I was thinking I didn't try that yellow one, but that's just a gold really, isn't it? Um, I haven't tried the mattes. I didn't think I would use those three mattes anyway. It was really these three or these four, the two there and the two there that I thought I would use. And I tried them one day, tried to get that one to work, couldn't get it to work. I took it off, tried that one, couldn't get it to work. And then I did the same with those two another day. It's, they're just not very nice. It's just really poor quality in my opinion. I couldn't get them to to show up very well on my eyes. They, you know, it was hard to get any pigment. And when you did, you can see that there's dents in them. It's just like they're too glittery. They're too, I don't know, nothing like any of the other palettes, unfortunately. So that was a big fail for me. Wow, I've got a lot of lipsticks there. Then next I have a pigment by Anastasia. You guys know I love a pigment and this one just looks amazing. This is in daiquiri and the swatch online just looked phenomenal let me see if i can use this brush i'm going to show you this brush because i bought this morphe brush but i actually think it would be better for using pigments than what i was trying to use it for but let me just quickly tell you about this brush this is the morphe mk21 there's another one i wanted that was very similar but that was out of stock but this one I saw somebody using something like this on the program Glow Up. If any of you have been watching Glow Up, it's like a makeup competition show. And I saw somebody using a brush like this underneath the eyes for the, you know, to blend out the underneath. And so that's what I used it for this morning. I used it to put eyeshadow underneath my eyes. And it's, it's pretty good, I'm not sure, but I think that this would be even better than my Zoeva 237. They're the brushes I use for every single colour you ever see on my lid for at least two to three years has been using the Zoeva 237 brush. I use it for pigments, matte eyeshadows, whatever I'm putting on my lid, that's the brush I use. I think this might even be a little bit better because it's a little bit firmer, this one, and a little bit flatter. Um, so let's see. So I'm gonna use it with this pigment that I was telling you about that's called Daiquiri. Yeah, I think this will be really, really good to put pigments on. I think this is actually a concealer brush. Um, so this is a really, really beautiful color see that it's very duochrome it's that lovely peachy color that I like but I'm going to give it one more go because I've only worn it once but when I put it on I felt like it aged my eyes which is just such a disappointment you know I put it on and thought it doesn't look as nice on my lids as it does in that swatch and it also just didn't do my eyes any favors and I've got pigments that I can use and I don't feel that way about it um, or about them so 
I'm gonna give it one more try and like I said, I'll let you know and it, it might appear in my empties and fails. This brush, I think I'm gonna try this going forward. I'm gonna go and wash it and try it with pigments and see what I think and then, or eyeshadows and then try it again under my eyes. I might end up buying another one of these because I do really like that as a brush. It's like, it's nice and firm and yeah, I think that'll be good. The other thing I would use this for is to put on eye base, eye primer. Um, I don't always do that, but sometimes I do. Um, and this one would be a really good one for that. A cream eyeshadow, cream bases, you know? Okay. Woo! Getting all hot again, getting all hot again. Okay. Everything else is lips, and then of course my hair and tan items. So let me show you these in a one because I bought three of the Barry M lip kits. And the funny thing about these is that I've bought these before. And there was one that I used to use constantly that they don't even use any do anymore. And you, so you can't buy them separately. They come in a kit with the corresponding lip liner. So let me show you the first one that is actually a fail. And I, I've got a feeling I've bought these exact colors before as well. I don't, don't know about this one, but this one is called, I can't read this one even with my um, glasses on, but this was one of those that looked lovely in the shop, but on my lips, it's a kind of sort of color I'd call ginger. Um, and on my lips it just didn't look nice it just didn't suit me and like I said you get the corresponding lip pencil so it's kind of an orange isn't it a copper copper that's the color it is a copper um, so I put it on was like no you know what I don't like that color so that's no good then I've been using the pink one which I do really like and like I said I think this is a repurchase and I was like well why did I not why did I give away the original ones they're called map me up by the way and I buy Barry M this one is in pose the lip liner on this is a bit too dark for this color i think so that's the color there pose i do really like this lip liquid lipstick i think the reason i gave it away and stopped using it was because i think it dried up and i think it's a little bit drying on the lips because i've tried this other stronger color that i'm going to show you and it was a bit drying and what which one was i going to show you that Hmm, you're not going to be able to see that. You're going to be able to see it in this one. You can see in the tube. I don't think you'll be able to see it, but there's sort of cracks in the tube. And when I have found that when liquid lipsticks do that, they are a bit drying. I don't know why, but um, you would maybe think they were more oily and were separating, but they seem to be a bit more drying. This one, I think it will be okay for a few uses and then I think I'll be like no I can't use that anymore it's too drying and I didn't really remember that because I saw them in the shop and was like oh, I'm pretty sure I loved those and but I'd ended up giving them away but this one in pose is I think one of my favorites and then the final one I got I haven't worn this one yet and this is in prestige and I just think this is a beautiful beautiful color it's stunning but I've got a feeling it will be too dry isn't that lovely it's a real rich metallic kind of burgundy isn't it and then the lip liner to go with it and the lip liner does go really well and um, the lip liners again are they're okay but they are a bit like you have to drag them across your lips I have to sharpen them and then really pull my lips taut in order to get any line they're not soft and creamy so the lip liners in themselves are not what interested me I, I would actually have just bought the liquid lipsticks if you could buy those colors on their own but I don't think you can you know there's certain colors that you can only buy in the lip kits um, I will try that colour, but I, like I said, I've got a feeling it will just be too drying. And then, oh, let me tell you about this one. This is a Soap and Glory one. I love this. This is called Peach Pout. And the colour is in Peach for the Sky. So there are three lip balms with tinted lip balms um, in different colours of peach. And this one is the Peach for the Sky. And I really like this. I've been using this quite a lot, actually, when my lips have been dry. And it's it just gives a nice hint of colour it's a little bit more than most you know a lot of a lot of tinted lip balms don't give you very much colour but that's really nice a really nice amount of colour it's not a lipstick enough to make you look too you know like like done up or anything like that it's just a really nice colour so I've really been enjoying that it is really nice and moisturising tempted to use it right there but shall I put some on because I have got a peach look on and take off that Bellini lip gloss I've got on put this one on Hopefully you'll be able to see. Oh yeah, it's really nice. Really, really nice. Lovely. Next, I bought three lipsticks from NYX um, and this is the Shout Loud lipstick range. 
A reason that there's quite a few lipsticks here is because there's no there was no samples for any of these for the Barry M or the NYX ones and so you just had to kind of go on what was there and hope that the colour looked like that. I don't think this colour in Mode, which is the first one of these NYX lipsticks, looks like that. That to me looks more pinky. I was looking at it thinking it looks a bit more pinky but this looks quite orange to me. Um, I don't know. I'm terrible with colour. Sometimes I'll say something on camera and say, you know, that's quite peachy, isn't it? And then I'll look at it and go, no, it's pink, you know, when I'm watching back the, the footage. But then I wonder if that's just what the camera does to it. I've tried very hard to get the camera to be very much like real life. But anyway, I don't love that colour, but I do love the feeling of the lipstick. It's such a shame because I wore, I've got three colours. So I've got that one in mode, this one in 21st, and this one in 21st is the one I was wearing in my last video. And it looked like that. Do you remember that bright colour? And you guys love this. I love the colour. I think the colour is beautiful. It's a pinky red. And I was hoping this would replace my, I've still kept three MAC red lipsticks, or two is it? Two or three. And they're ones that I love. And there's one called All Fired Up, I think it is. And I thought that might replace that one. But this is too creamy for me. I need one that is completely matte. This one, if I went to touch my nose, I would get red lipstick all down there. I had a bit of red lipstick here at one point that my husband had to point out. It would gather in the corner of my mouth and you know, I had to keep doing that. That to me is no good with a coloured lipstick. It just, with a bright, bold lipstick, you know, it just makes me, will make me paranoid the whole time I'm wearing it. I don't mind that so much with a nude lipstick, but I don't love the nude colour. Um, this next one I've not tried. This was a bit of a risky one because it, again, I don't think it looks particularly like the colour on the lid but um, I don't think this is the colour I'm going to love. I think this is one of those colours that if I wore this I think you guys would love it on me um, but I just don't love it. I've got something like that. The, the closest thing I've got to that that I like is the Too Faced liquid lipstick in Queen B. It's a bit more muted than that. It's more I suppose like that one there. That was just a bit bolder and brighter isn't it? But I don't really like that sort of purpley colour um, and, and like I said with it being that sort of formula that it comes off I'm not going to use that so these aren't a fail they're lovely lipsticks and I'm trying to think who I can give them to I might give them to Eve because um, I think she would look great in that colour actually I think Eve would look really nice so I think I will give that one to Eve thinking about it um, and, the, and unfortunately I don't like the nude colour I don't think there was many other colours in the range but they are really lovely feeling if you like a good cream lipstick and you're used to wearing cream lipsticks in bold colours then I think they would be really good okay that's everything for makeup so let me show you the couple of self tan items I bought and also the hair items that I think are really exciting um, the two self tanners I bought were these Nip Plus Fab Tan this one is the Faux Tan Sleep Mask and this one is the Faux Tan Bronzing Oil both of these, when I used them, and I used both of them on my face and neck at different times, um, went immediately into my book of favourites. So on my list of favourites, and I was like, oh, these are lovely. This one, really lovely to apply. Um, you can see I didn't need to use much. There's hardly any gone. Reminds me of the Saint Tropez oil. Don't remember the fragrance, if there was any. Tiny bit of fragrance. It is a bit self-tan smelling, though. I don't mind that myself. But, you know, it wasn't too oily, didn't break me out. The colour was beautiful the next day. This one is a an untinted, another untinted one, but this is a serum. It says sleep mask. I don't use them at night because otherwise, because I must sleep like that. <laughs> they get those white lines on my neck. And again, this one came out lovely. They're both, the result of the colours from these, I would say is the same. They were both quite a medium tan, not a gradual tan, you know, not a light colour, but not too dark. Perfect for me. So they both got listed on my favourites, but these almost instantly come off. I don't understand how that can even happen or why that happens. But when I've got a self tan on, the first day, uh, the following day, I'll wash my face. And then when I take my makeup off, I do have to cleanse a little bit more than most people because, you know, to get the cotton wool um, thing clean because of the self tan. But normally I can get a clean cotton wool pad. I can still have a clean face. But with these, it was like, Okay, and another one, and another one, and I need another one, another one. I'm talking about the reusable ones, by the way. And it just, every every time I was cleansing my face again, this, this was coming off, and I was like, oh, now it's starting to go patchy on my neck. So I love these, but they just come off too easily. The only thing I was thinking is I might 
because I probably do pull quite hard on my face when I'm removing my makeup that way with a micellar water, I might use these again and then just make a point of removing my makeup with a cleanser in the um, bath or shower, you know, and then just go over once with a micellar pad so as, so as to be more gentle. I wonder if I was more gentle if it wouldn't have gone so patchy and it wouldn't have come off so easy. So that's those two. Um, this one was the Australian Glow Self Tan Mousse in Medium. I used this on my legs and feet and yeah, it was okay. I need to use this a little bit more to tell you exactly what I think, but it, it was definitely, there was definitely patchiness, but I always seem to have that problem. I haven't found anything that doesn't go patchy on my legs and feet a little bit. So um, I don't know, I, I need to give it more of a go and I haven't tried this on my face and neck, which I intend to do. Okay, colors. What I am currently wearing, well not wearing, but what I have in my hair is the one that I told you last time was I had used the Osmo. Now I'm gonna show you some Osmo colors um, and it's called Color Revive Conditioner and I had used one in warm chestnut. So just a conditioner, just a tonal conditioner. It's not a hair dye. It is just something that's supposed to give your hair a bit of color. I've used these before and they sometimes stay in my hair. So I don't know how long this one will take to wash out. This is, I've washed it once since using that warm chestnut. No, twice, twice, sorry. Um, and so I wanted to try this rose tone one and see if this would show up. It's probably a silly time to have used it because if this was ever gonna show up in my hair, it would show up when I had my lighter kind of strawberry blonde hair. Before I put this warm chestnut in, that was my natural color. So my natural color is a light ginger. Um, and I wanted to bring those tones out and thought this rose tone, it says rose, but it's actually quite orange as you can see. Anyway, I used this yesterday and I used two thirds of this tube yesterday. I don't know whether it's bought out my red tones or not, or my ginger tones. I just like sort of warming up my hair as much as I can. Um, and experimenting and so things like these with the with the toners you know that are not dyes are perfect for me if they actually wash out because like you, like I said I've had trouble with them not. I really liked the colour and the formula of the Colour Revive conditioners so I bought three more. I bought one in violet. I don't know whether I'll use this or not. Well I'll definitely try it at some point but I don't know whether to just use it on its own and see what that's like because I think it would maybe look me make me look a bit too deathly pale, you know, because I am pale, having violet hair might look a bit odd. I thought I might mix that in with something. Then I got the Radiant Red, which, you know, this is the colour you guys know I love. I, again, I don't know whether I'll use this conditioner on its own, because even with the warm chestnut, I just used about 20 pumps of the warm chestnut in with my usual conditioner. So this isn't the full colour you would get with warm chestnut. Um, but I might just put a few bits of this in with my conditioner and see what happens. And then this one is called Purple Rouge. This one, when I looked at them yesterday, they didn't look that much different. Try and squeeze a little bit out so you can see. They don't look that much different. One, But what I've read about this one is it's more pinky um, and it does look to be more pinky on there, doesn't it? So um, I don't know whether I'll love that one, but I just thought, you know what, as I said to you, I'm trying to, one of the ways I think I'm coping with with my dad's death is that I do have now have a little bit more interest in my beauty things like my eyeshadow and hair and all of that and so I'm trying to have a little bit of fun with it you know and play around with it and so that's what I'm going to do play around with these colors and see what I think that's everything that I bought that was a much longer video than I intended um but I hope that that was interesting to you let me know what you think about all of these things and I don't know when this spending will stop I keep thinking you know this there's, there's nothing else that's going to interest me like I literally go a lot of these were bought from Superdrug, by the way. The NYX lipsticks were, the Barry M lipsticks were, the B Superdrug one was, of course, the mascaras. And I went into Superdrug to look for one thing. And th I always think, oh, there's nothing that's going to interest me because I've got so much makeup. Like, what could possibly interest me? And then I'm like, oh, I like that and I like that. Uh, <laughs> so I obviously don't know myself, but I keep thinking, right, that must be it. There's nothing else that's going to grab my attention, you know, but, but it does. Um, so anyway, I will list all of my makeup, etc. in the description below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you again soon.